Okay. Can you can you tell other students on how you get ninety two? What? Did you get any two? No. Who get any two? Drop. Can you stand up? How do you how do you do it? Well, first you get the Reynolds number from the super pressure liquid, and then uh, you get your pressure factor and this this equation for the pressure factor. Can we share your okay. exam? To other? Yeah. Except our number? Okay. <laughs> mm. Nothing special, right? So the question here is calculate the fris frictional pressure drop based on the superficial liquid velocity minus dpdl sub sl tell me Tope, what is the formula for this minus dpdl sub sl open your book everyone open your book find find this okay perhaps maybe it's on the page 66 so the top part you see this Minus dpdl sub sl, two cancel with two, so it's two, and this whole thing is f, two f rho v square over d. Okay, that's a formula that you should know by now. Okay, so did you get Reynolds number right? Ten thousand. Okay. This is, of course, the typo. I want to write G, but it's L. If you use this number, who used this number? None of you, right? <laughs> did you, I think did you use 0.002? Did you use that? Yes, you, you gave it, I used it. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's still be fine, it's still be fine. Even though you use that, I don't... Uh, if your final solution is uh, correct, it's fine. I don't need that any part because that's my fault. <laughs> so first you get Reynolds number sub SL, right? Next, calculate the friction factor. The formula for friction factor is given, right? So I don't expect you to know that is 0.046. I don't expect you to know that. And n should be 0.2. I don't expect you to know that. So I give this to you. But I expect you to know 2f rho v squared over d. Okay. Can you go to page please, 19? No, I don't. Let me finish this. So once put everything in, then you get 92. Don't forget the minus sign here. So it's minus dpdr sub sl. Okay, which page? 19. 19. Page 19. I have to yes, of course. So 137. 137. Yes, of course. What's up? What's yes, about 137? Yes, yes. What's about 137? No question. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> Alright. So, the next one will be easier than this. I, I, I try better, okay, I try more. Let's go back. Hmm. Are you ready for the next quiz? Next time we may or may not have quiz. I think we should because we didn't. Not many people finish this one. Good. We should. Uh, I got a question about the the project. Inside the well, we assume isothermal, and the the given temperature is the temperature of the liquid inside, liquid and gas inside. Okay. Outside for the subsea pipeline line and riser, the given temperature for like 150 or something, that's the liquid temperature inside and the subsea temperature is 40 as given earlier, okay? Um, 
Jie Sheng. How are you doing? Good. Did you read about transient edge? How we derive that? Yes or no? No. That's like um like one of the top students in the class. So I asked her. I expect yes, but she said no. Okay, I'll ask you next time later. Okay, next Monday. Um. So by now you know analog already, but not much on the uh, how we get those equation. Okay. I expect you to be able to read the textbook and understand how we get that equation too. And from that equation, how do we do combined momentum equation? Let's go over it briefly. Sylvester model, so we done with that. Analog flow. In this analog flow model, who have a chance to read the textbook? It's not many pages. Jay Shane, did you have a chance to read this? Okay, yeah, Wei Sheng. Did you read anything about analog flow? No. Who is missing today? Other than Maria. Maria told me that she's sick. Who else? Okay, just one. So, let's take a look at this. The only thing that you need to be able to do is momentum balance. This equation, okay. Oh. Okay, that equation that you want to be able to do it. So this is the same as the stratified flow, right? Pressure force is balanced by shear and gravity. So this is a pressure force, this is shear, and that's gravity. So this is the balance for the gas core. Okay, that's the balance for the gas core. Uh, I think the next quiz will be about uh, equation number and page number. <laughs> so it is going to be open book. I will ask you, okay, for this kind of equation, what is the equation number and what is the page number? So you really need to open the book and find equation number and page number. The purpose is to ensure that you have a chance during this weekend to read a book. Okay, we have you, you want to do the project so that you know everything about one first flow, right? And to ensure that you do the project right. To do the project right, you should read a book. To know that you read a book, I will ask you about equation number and page number. For example, you remember the combined momentum equation for the uh, start five flow, what is the page number, what is the equation number, you should be able to tell me that. Okay? And that is some part in the final exam too. Oh, not final, exam four. Okay, this is for false balance. Okay, gas call. We do the same thing for the film. Take a look at the sign. Okay, take a look at the sign. This is uh, upward, right? So at the bottom is P at the top is P plus DP. Up is positive. So P minus parenthesis P plus DP. So we have that. So the force that go up is balanced by the force that go down, which is tau and rho G. Right? Okay. That is for the core. For the film, we do the same thing. So this part is the part that that's my thing. Okay, this this is a core. So okay, no no film yet. Can you do it for the film? Yes, of course you can. So instead of AC, we be something else. So this is a force balance for the core part. Okay, we do the force balance for the film part. In the core part, the parameter that we don't know is F sub i. Okay, F sub i is interfacial friction factor. They model that by use the concept of this. I equal to F i over F sc. 
So first, I put a superficial core, uh, frictional uh, friction factor, multiplied by i, give us f i. Okay, Arya, you open the book, right? Which page number that have correlation for capital I? First of all, which chapter that we are at right now? <laughs> chapter 4, right? So you should open somewhere in chapter 4. We'll be at 156. 156? Yes. 156. Okay, we have equation 4.65 is that formula. And the closure relationship, we have several. One of them is 4.67. So if I ask you, OK, closure relationship from what is 1969 for that capital I is on what page and what equation number? You can do it, right? So next time, bring the book and open it quickly. I try to do it myself. It takes me about five minutes. But I give you 10 minutes. So to be fine for you. Okay. There are several of them. Uh, there's no correct one. Okay. Uh, for the time being, we use 4.67, which is what is 1969 for the every derivation. Okay. Some improvement can be used. And that is like some correlation is valid, uh, validated against air water. But if you have some other fluid, it could be different. Okay? All right. FSC is superficial core friction factor calculated by using uh, another formula. So formula will be given next. I actually show you, right? FSG. So everything is defined up front. Vsg, we can calculate it, right? Rho g, mu g is given. So we can calculate fsg. Sometimes we can replace fsc by fsg. Sometimes. For the rough approximation, we use, you can use part 005. Most of the time, you don't want to do that. So to calculate, the superficial core friction factor, we need to know uh, entrainment fraction. Okay? So if you do rough approximation, we can use, okay, 0.005, then easy enough. But of course, it's not right. Not what you do in the project, okay? In the project, you do better one. But you don't have Excel, you don't have calculator, you do hand calculator and use 0.005. But if you, you have calculator, do something that's more accurate. We have several closure relationship for capital I or the ratio between FSC and FSG. Okay, so I cross this one in the the version that I upload on the blackboard. Okay, so we don't have any additional bonus or anything. You have enough bonus already. So we have several of that. There's a correlation for downward friction factor, upward friction factor. Uh, friction factor ratio, okay? Select, if you do downward, select downward. If you do upward, select upward. If you do upward, the easiest one can be this one, or this, okay? All right, that's a closure relationship. Uh, entrainment fraction is that. So that's the closure relationship for entrainment fraction. What I want you to know is, what is the definition of entrainment fraction? So you memorize that equation. I don't think it's on a quiz and on the final exam it's open book. Okay. So, but I still want you to memorize it. WL of droplet divided by total WL. That is the concept of entrainment fraction. Entrainment fraction is the mass fraction of liquid that is entrained in the gas core. That's it. We have several uh, closure relationship. Uh, I recommend this one because it's easy. Okay, will be more accurate. It's, it's depend. You have to compare it against your uh, result. So we have several closure relationship for F sub e entrainment fraction. So entrainment fraction is the mass fraction that is entrained 
in the car. So, all right. This is an assumption. You read it for yourself, okay? Fully developed, uniform film thickness, homogeneous, non slip or something, something, something. Uh, I have requests for those of you who, uh, not just those of you, for Arya and uh, Raymond, please come to me after class when you have questions. If you don't have questions, don't have to come me come after class. Okay, so that we can cover it a little bit quicker. Um, so we have combined uh, we have momentum equation for film and gas core. Okay, look at the sign. Minus here, this means downward is negative. Okay, same as here, downward is negative. And look at this rho, it's not rho g, it's rho sub c. So the weight comes because of the core mass, and core has both gas and liquid. Alright? So we have momentum equation uh, for each phase. We do the same approach that we did for stratified flow, do the combined momentum equation. After do the combined momentum equation, do the same approach as in the stratified flow, make it into dimensionless form. Very easy, right? Do you know how to make the dimensionless form for stratified flow? Vega. Yes or no? I knew it once. <laughs> if it is open book, can you do it? Probably. Probably. Did you just say yes? Okay. <laughs> yes. All right, we have combined momentum equation. The way that we, com we combine it, we combine it to eliminate that term. DPDR sub C, DPDR sub F. So this is the same thing as in stratified flow. Okay, and we have a geometric relationship. So this time it's not top and bottom, it's like a film around the pipe. So they have some geometric relationship. I hope you can derive it. It's not that difficult. I redo it. I get the same thing that is in the book. So NF, SI, SL, SG, everything is the same as in the book. So this is a new geometric relationship. You remember for stratified flow, every geometric relationship is dependent upon height. Tolani, you remember that? Everything is combined momentum equation is a function of height. This time it is the same concept. The combined momentum equation is a function of fin thickness. Okay, fin thickness because Every geometric relationship is dependent upon fin thickness. Okay? Right. So, this is just a, a hydraulic diameter, like D sub F, D sub C. So, in stratified flow, we have something similar to this, right? And do some, uh, get some expression for velocity. For velocity, sub F is the actual velocity in the film. Okay, and this part is a derivation of it that we don't go through, but basically V sub F, which is a velocity in the film, can be written as a function of film thickness. Given that we know F sub E, entrainment fraction, and VSL. So if we know volumetric flow rate divided by area, uh, Sheng, uh, are you okay? <laughs> so, you see in the front line, you know that, right? <laughs> okay, when we have a VSL, FE, then V sub F is only a function of thickness, delta. Okay, so that's V sub F. Sheng, where do we need V sub F? Where do we use it? Okay, which term contain V sub F? In, okay, we have combined momentum equation 3.81. This one. Okay. Which term has anything to do with V sub F? I guess the first term. Tau WL? Yes. What about tau I? Is that going to have anything to do with V sub F? 
Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah, we're saying. In chapter 4, our various et al. model, which equation that gives you the expression for tau i? What page number? Everyone else prepare for that same question, okay, in case that Yahweh didn't do it. You get it, Yahweh? One sixty one. Four point sixty four. Right? So that tell me tau i is f i, go c, v c minus v f, everything squared divided by two. So v sub f has to do with tau i calculation. Correct? Okay. What about tau Yahweh? What about tau W F? Which equation with 4.94 So that has to do with V sub F, right? That's also V sub F squared So my point is This shear stress That shear stress dependent Upon the actual velocity Actual velocity can be calculated based on VSL, VSG, F sub E And delta We need to know fin thickness Once we know fin thickness it's, It is the same as a stratified flow Everything would be a function of Fintiness. So it is one equation by unknown. We can solve it numerically, or we can use the sharp. Okay. So once we know that every parameter, of course, you will go through page 160 and 161, right? It's just two pages. So once we have expression for every term, it's kind of a lot, and I recheck it, I get the same thing that is in the book. Okay. So the book is correct. So we can express everything in terms of given information and Fe and V sub F. Okay. So this Fi is one of the unknown. For stratified flow, can we talk about what do we do with Fi? Or use 0 0.0. So we get it from closure relationship, right? So this time in the facial fraction factor has to be obtained from Closure relationship two. So this time we use F I equal to I F F S C. Okay. So we put everything in, including expression for I. We use expression for I from Boris nineteen ninety six. One plus three hundred multiplied by I think delta T Right. One plus three hundred multiplied by delta T delta L over D. Okay. So plug everything in and try to make it dimensionless form. Okay? And the procedure to make it into the dimensionless form is to put every geometrical relationship into substitute all those uh, geometry things inside the equation, right? So substitute all the geometric relationship inside the combined momentum equation. Okay, number one. Number two, substitute this from ball list inside. Okay? And of course, try to make, instead of friction factor, sub f, try to change from friction factor to superficial friction factor. So, change from that f to f sub sl. Okay? So the process is the same as in stratified flow. Put everything together, do a little bit more math. A little bit more math. Still a little bit more math. And finally, uh, quite a bit more math, okay. <laughs> finally, you get that equation. So the method to obtain 4.101 is the same approach that they use for Stratified flow. Okay. Step one, get the combined momentum equation. Step two, substitute any unknown, uh, any anything, make everything to be a function of delta. Okay. Field thickness is a function of delta. The length is a function of delta. And tau, tau WL, tau F can be expressed in terms of VSL, VST, and delta. So once we get all that, put everything in. And something that you need from closure relationship, such as I, capital I, or the ratio of the friction factor, we put 
Oh, they don't put it in, so we still have I. See this I. So that's it. And once everything is in dimensionless form, we do the plot. Okay, so we have x, y, and delta. Previously, you don't really have this form, right? You don't really have this form. You have a i tilde, a g tilde. But everything is a function of x, y, and h tilde. This time is x, x m, y m, and dimensionless thickness. Okay, they group this into one term and call it x and 0. So group that into one term. Once we plot the combined momentum equation, we get this kind of plot. That is combined momentum equation. So this is the same as uh, page 64, I think. 68. You still remember this, right? <coughs> This graph. It, this is the function of height, x, and y. Okay, but what we have now is <coughs> height, uh, it's not height, it's thickness, x, m0, and y, m. Modify y, modify x. So m is slightly different from log half metanolia parameter. So log half metanolia parameter is the ratio of minus dpdl sub sl divided by minus dpdl sub sg, right? This time, it is not bad. Instead of sg is sc. Very similar. Very similar, right? So, what is the <coughs> expression for y? Uh, then what is the expression for y? Which page number, which equation number? Quickly, please. Arya to And whoever get it first, tell me. Raise your hand. Expression for y is four point okay one sixty three one sixty three capital y not y sub m capital y not y sub m capital y for stratified flow is page sixty seven right equation three point three six and if you look at it capital y is rho l minus rho g so here we have rho l minus rho c. Right. Multiply by g sin theta, g sin theta stays the same. Divided by dpdl sub s t. But this time it is dpdl sub s c. So basically, to change uh, inclination, dimension as number for inclination angle, instead of use d in stratified flow, change that to c. And it's good. Done. Okay? So, we don't go through the math again, but I want you to know the concept that step one, make the combined momentum equation. Step two, uh, put it as one function, one unknown, and every unknown should be a function of fin thickness. It's verified flow is a function of height. You can solve the dimensional form, okay, or you can solve the dimensionless form. Then you can plot the graph like this. Okay, after we have this graph, we get that thickness, right? Once we get thickness, you have option. Okay? Option one, we know that we express tau as a function of thickness earlier, right? So we can use this equation to get Bf. Are you see this delta? We already know F. F comes from closure relationship, so we can get Bf. Can we get actual call velocity? Yes, we can. Actual call velocity is a function of delta or thickness. VSL, VSG, FE, we know that, right? So we add, we get VC, VF. Can we go back to our original moment of equation before we combine them? Yes, we can. We can calculate, okay, tau i, right? We can calculate SI. Once we know thickness, we can calculate everything else. And then we can get pressure drop, okay? They make it, uh, it easier for us already. That's option one, which is correct. Option two, we can use this chart. OK? 
Okay. When we use this chart, where's that phi sub L square come from? It's come from dimensionless combined momentum equation. Okay. Dimensionless combined momentum equation. So in the combined momentum equation, there's a way to write it in uh, some kind of odd way. So we can use phi sub C square. This is kind of dimensionless pressure drop. Okay. Total pressure drop scaled by uh, minus dpdr sub sc. So this is for the core part. For the fin part, we have that thing too. Okay. So that is kind of dimensionless form. And this thing can, we have the expression of this dimensionless frictional pressure loss or kind of total pressure loss based on thickness and other parameter, right? So we can use this graph, this equation, and that equation too. This one is simplified form, a lot easier. So if you don't want to use a graph, using graph means that you have to read it manually, right? If you don't want to read the graph, you can use the expression directly. You can use 1.4.105. Don't tell me that your answer is off a lot because you use a graph. That can be the excuse for the stratified flow, okay? But this time it's not really the excuse because you already have the equation. Once we get thickness, we plug it in, we calculate i. i is 1 minus 300 multiplied by uh, delta tilde, right? Once we get delta tilde, Dimension the skin thickness, we can calculate i. Put everything in, we get 5c squared. So, of course, if you want to check if your calculation is correct or not, you can always compare with this graph. Okay, so this function, so if I ask you, okay, this line is the plot based on which equation number, from what page number? You should be able to tell me that, okay, this line is a plot from mm, this equation. So it's phi c squared as a function of delta, i is 1 plus 300 delta t log. Okay? Good? We good at that? So once we get phi c squared, minus dpdl sub sc is already known. Which equation number? Okay, everyone trying to find equation number for minus dpdr sub sc. And whoever get this first, tell me. Come on, you have to. Oh, what, what equation number? 162, what equation number? 499, okay. So it is already known, right? It's based on v sub sc. Superficial core velocity is dependent upon uh, Fe. So which equation do you get for V sub SC? What page number? Come on, come on, Danny. Raymond, you get it? 160, 5.87. So the answer, you have that just one, two, three, four, five, five pages. So your answer should be within that five pages, okay? It's just that five, five pages. So once we get this, then we can pull it pressure drop. Done. Okay? Uh, oh, what's more idea? So this part, we have already, we briefly talked about it. I would like you to uh, read a little bit more on the book, but the basic idea is that mechanistic model is very good, especially for the case of annular flow, if we combine everything together, mechanistic model is still good, okay? But hagedorn brow is also good because hagedorn brow has a lot of data. If we want to compare model performance against the data, uh, raw data, sometimes they eliminate hagedorn brow data so that it's not biased. So if I have my model, I compare the result of my model, prediction of my model based on hydrogen and bound data, 
and I compare hydrogen bar data with hydrogen bar model, of course, mechanistic model cannot compete, right? Because that's the, uh, the kind of correlation that may be perfectly fit for that case. So sometimes we neglect this. All right. So let's skip some part and visit that later for slide number seven. Okay. For today, we are going to jump from slide number one. So we don't take a look at that yet. Okay. This is minor point. Let's give you the most important thing first. Okay. That we will talk about it later. Not even that. Not even that. I had the graph to show you. This graph. Okay. This one. Okay, let's jump to this one. Oh, question number three. Question? I have a question. 